So what's going on? You didn't come down here with no cameras and all that. I asked you that earlier. I no, said, you did. I, did. I said, don't I come down here with no goddamn cameras and stuff. Hello? I told you I didn't want my face on this shit. Even if your face is shown, how would somebody come after you? Nobody You'd be surprised who knows me. Everybody in Brooklyn know me. But they don't know where you are. And they know me in Harlem, too. They know my but face. But they don't know where you are. I might not even make no fucking independent film. Motherfuckers come after me. Ms. Ready? like the word informer. I consider myself as a civilian operative. The public is not supposed to know I work for them. I don't exist, I'm a spook. touch. See like that? See that there, there? I'll take care of the side. You just take care of that part. Bring it over a little bit. Mm -hmm. There you go. What's up, Todd? You know, I got a gut feeling about this, and you know, exactly. What happened with the FBI? They called me to do an assignment in Pittsburgh. Whatever the case may be, if they want me to do surveillance, I'm going to do it. You know, I need the money. I need the money. Whenever this case comes out, if it's worth 200000 I'm going to give it all to my son. I kind of messed up last time. I mismanaged all my money, at least over two, 300000 
So if this is my second chance, I'm gonna take advantage of it. Why is the what? Why is the map on the wall? Find my locations around here. Is there significance to the red lines? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's it regarding the work I do. No, I'm going to give you the picture. I'm going to put them up on here. It'll be better for you because I don't want to explain nothing to you. You got it? That's it. Don't ask no question who they are. I'm giving you something that you shouldn't be seeing anyway. Right. You know something? I know, you always getting fucking headshots. Didn't you say you wanted to do this project? Yeah, don't you ever give us a break? Now I can see why no fucking celebrities don't like Pazarazzi. You're not gonna tell us anything? No, I mean, these are just, these are all targets. That's in suspected areas. For some reason, they got a big population of Muslims that come from the various countries over there to come to school here. Moroccans. Somalis, Iranians, Saudis. And then they all go back from where they come from. I don't have no feelings for them. You're making the Islam look bad, you gotta go. In a new book called The Terror Factory, Trevor Aronson documents how the Federal Bureau of Investigation has built a vast network of informants since 9-11 and how those new FBI tactics work within the delicate balance between civil liberties and domestic safety. You know, before 9-11, the FBI investigated crimes after they occurred. And then, then after 9-11, the mandate on the FBI was never again. And so what they're trying to do now, unlike before, is stop crimes before they happen. And these sting operations are how they do that. How many informants did they employ before 9-11? Under Hoover, during the COINTELPRO days, the FBI had 1,500 informants. And then after 9-11, there was an explosion up to 15,000. Hasn't the FBI actually recruited criminals and con men? Absolutely. You know, the best informants are kind of the worst people. A federal court judge describes informants to me as sociopaths because they require them to build these very close relationships and then betray them for personal means. Make a big bus. And they want to bust this guy, you know, whoever else is his associates regarding that. He just gave me his picture and told me, look, this is the POI. What is POI? Person of interest. His name is Khalifa. They suspect that he might be involved in individuals dealing with domestic terrorism. Right now, I would like to make this my last assignment. I want to spend the rest of my little bit of time with my son, not 1,800 something miles away. Have you made contact with the POI? Yep. Yeah. I bumped into him by accident on my own. I just hadn't been walking because I was going to go to Goodwill. The bus stop was right there. And I happened to see him and his wife, so I walked over there and greeted them. 
The second time I met him with a brother named uh, Jamil, Afrocentric shop. And at that point, we exchanged numbers. He gave me his card, which contained his email, and his website, and the things that he do. The Shabayan teaching something. What does Al Shabab mean in Arabic? It's supposed to be students. But in Somali, the word Shaban is linked to a terrorist group. He wasn't Muslim all the time. He was a thug. Always fighting with the police. He did time. Does he think you're new to Pittsburgh? He know I'm new to Pittsburgh. Why does he think you're here? To do work for Red Cross, search and rescue. Do you know how this guy first came to their attention? The way I see him running around here now, it would make any motherfucker suspicious. He walking around looking like a Taliban. My name is Khalifa Al-Akili, and I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the United States of America. Darakuf, the belly of the beast. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. His whole concept is about the government. He don't like the government. Why must we never forget 9-11 people kill Murray or die every single day? So he has a hatred toward the government. He doesn't really go out and speak in public about that. He does it on Facebook. That's right. Most of the times they just tell you to get close to the target. If you can get in the same apartment, same apartment building, two or three blocks proximity. Twice a week, the agents tell me, yo, he gonna be here, he gonna be there. Cause it's obvious they're tapping his phones. These agents here is a little slow. They're not used to dealing with so-called domestic terrorist individuals. It ain't like New York. somewhat brief and yeah, they said you know to gather information gather intel you know in the interest of national security then I shall oblige by gathering that information and taking it to my superiors who at this time will be paying me some money
What is the character that you're playing with Khalifa? I'm not playing no character. I'm playing. I'm playing who I am. You know, a Muslim brother who was involved with the Black Panther Party. That that image there. I joined the Black Panther Party, if I remember correctly. It was during the spring time, yeah, around 1967. At that time, I was a little fly kid, wearing fly clothes. So I'm looking for, you know, like a pack. You always want to look to be a part of a group, a family, or fraternity. We are organizing the community, politically educating them, telling them uh, exactly what is going on, not only here and in America. I was interested in what they were saying. What the government can supply that we take upon ourselves to give to the people. We're going to walk on this racist power structure, and we're going to say to the whole damn government, stick them up, motherfucker. This is a hold up. We come for what's ours. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover today asserted that of the black extremist groups, the Black Panthers represent the greatest internal threat to the nation. This memo apparently went out to 37 agents. It ordered them to find informers in the black ghettos. It was a command, not a suggestion. The documents describe things like COINTELPRO, the FBI's program to disrupt political extremists. The FBI had the organization under surveillance. There had been efforts to get people inside our meetings. Were you an informant during the Panther days? No. What did the party say about informants? They kill them. Are all of your POIs Muslim? Yes, all the POIs are Muslims. Why do you think that is? I don't know what makes them Muslims. I took my shot in the early 70s. It's a very practical religion, but there are certain things you have to maintain, you know, you know help one another, and virtues and piety. At this point now, I am struggling with my faith. You know what I mean? Not because I don't believe in the Lord. Things didn't go my way as I may have planned it to be. You know, there's times I've been strong, there's times I've been weak. Too many Muslims in this whole area likes this dude. They don't, because he starts trouble. One imam had to call the police on him to get him out the fucking mosque, because he kept running run off at the mouth. He had nerve to turn around and told the imam, he said, you're going you, you gonna to remember this. do it that way. You just talk about Islam. You don't do that on the first day you meet. You don't do it on the first week. It might take you two or three weeks. You feel the individual. You see if he got grudges. You find out how he became Muslim. Why he wanted to become Muslim.
Bill, Sator. You just don't run into a community and expect to get results within a matter of four or six months. You know what I'm saying? I don't have Bayat to this mosque, and I don't have Bayat to the Imam here either. And most people, you have Bayat to the Imam, that way you can move around with them. I don't have it. Even with this kid, I have to wait till he open up to say something just to find my way to get in there. Exactly. All right, later. Some of my other cases, other individuals, we have a lot in common. Even though this guy's Muslim, I'm Muslim, but that's, that's as far as it go. He and I has nothing in common at all. Music-wise, politics, culture, none of it. He's showing me in his library uh, books on guerrilla warfare and all that. The United States Army Ranger handbook of dealing with explosives. Revolutionary Islamic literature. How to train jihadists, you know? How to fight. I'm gonna say, you ever been in the war? You ever been in the military? No. Then how the hell do you know anything about guerrilla warfare? Why do you have it there? Just for show? Try to impress people? So who set up your Facebook account? The FBI. I don't fuck with this shit. They didn't want to push me to do this. All right, what do I do for now? They should have gave you a class. For what class? These fuckers don't know nothing. All they want to do is just try to make a fucking arrest. Who the hell is this girl, Victoria Carr? She wanna be my friend? I may know you from so-and-so. You don't know me. Let me see how much I know you. Oh. She wanna be my friend. Ooh. <laughs> the POI. Um, I just sent him a request, because he didn't want to answer it before. How do I go out on this shit? Have you ever gotten a target that was a friend or a family member? Yeah, yeah, Shaw. Shaw was my friend. Was he a friend before he He was my friend, yes, he was my friend. Yes, he was. Was he a friend before he was? Yes, he was my friend. I just, you asked the question three times, I didn't told you. Yes, he was my friend, proud of him being investigated. In the Shaw case, you're dealing with homegrown, African-American Muslims. His father was Captain Joseph Shaw, who was a lieutenant with, with Malcolm X. A Florida physician and a self-described martial arts expert from New York are under arrest tonight, charged with plotting to train terrorists for Al-Qaeda. The government says it has the pair in audio tapes wearing a bayat, or oath of allegiance to Osama bin Laden. The complaint alleges Shaw did most of the talking to a government informant wearing a wire. I try to give him warning, try to tell him certain things and leave things alone. Might have felt that he was untouchable. <laughs> Prosecutors contend that Shaw told a government informer that his work as a jazz musician was, quote, the greatest cover. Tariq Shaw! <laughs> Shaw was introduced to me by an agent while Shaw was doing the gig. I went for bass lessons three times a week in his house. That was my front. And of course, when he learned these bass lessons, I'm talking with him. My pitch was that he could make some money if he makes some alliance with Al Qaeda. And they're looking for certain individuals such as himself and uh, they be willing to pay you for your time, you know. So when I fed him that line, that's what he went at. It's like a bait. 
through the hook out there, he bit into it. This is Tariq and I at my birthday party. I forget, I was either 50 or 51. They had given me a birthday party with a, a stripper. But we will not take pictures of the stripper. Tariq mentioned that he was giving this person bass lessons, and I didn't even know his name. So then when he had said that this particular person needed a place to stay, and would I be willing to rent him the apartment downstairs? So I said to Tariq, well, I don't know this person. So he said, well, Ma, I can vouch for him. I said, are you sure? He, you know, he's doing pretty good. You know, as well as can be expected under the conditions. For 10 years, we've been suffering quietly. They send informants into our community, we stay quiet, we stay afraid, and that only makes our job easier. The longer we stay quiet, the more dangerous it is for our children and our future generations. And so this campaign will be mobilizing people in Muslim communities, black communities, immigrant communities, civil rights communities, everybody together to fight the use of these informants and surveillance. I think Tariq is so hurt because he liked the brother and he trusted the brother. Tariq is such a believer in Islam and I think he feels that Allah will deal with him. Yeah. I said, come on. You want that snow? You want that snow? Come on, come on, come on. Heal up, heal up, heal, heal. Heal up, heal. Stop it. Don't do that. You make, you make her nervous. She ain't gonna do nothing to you. Oh. Hey, hey, yeah, she didn't tore your coat. You see? Yeah. Yeah, you can, don't, don't run after and play, let her play like that. Cause her, hey, her teeth are sharp. So you gotta tell your mama, wow. Previously on Homeland. She wants out. She asked for five million dollars and a flight to Detroit. This is not some setup. It's real. A former married for years to Hezbollah commander. Turns out. Out of the blue, promising out. Forgive me, I thought we'd better meet her sooner rather than later. Well, we were supposed to meet her together, so you can talk to her and I could assess her reliability. Meaning you don't trust my judgment? Mm. Meaning the entire point of the protocol was to keep your judgment out of it. Jerry? Mm. We're gonna have to get back to you. Mm. Saul, she seemed credible to you? I'm not really in a position to say. How exactly do they train you to kind of prepare? They don't train me for none. Is how.